you want to classify board games based on their subject matter, there's all sorts of different categorizations that you can make, starting with the broad categories of fantasy and science fiction that can be subdivided in different ways. You have pirate games and zombie games and medieval court interaction games, which often have a broad overlap with succession to the dying king or queen game. There's far too many of those, far more than kings and queens actually die. Someone should think up a different topic when they have that idea in mind. Another broad category of games, train games. And to the layperson, a lot of these titles will look the same, an example of which I saw when I received a review copy of Switch and Signal, a design by David Thompson and Cosmos, where my son looked at the box and said, man, this looks like a ripoff of Ticket to Ride. And I thought, what have I been teaching this child? How could he say that? So while he's off at re-education camp, let me give you an overview of this game, which is in fact a cooperative game, which you can tell by the subtitle, Gemeinsam an Ziel, which is reach the goal together. You are trying to deliver goods to one or two port cities, depending on which side of the board you play on. It's a two to four player game that plays in about 30 to 45 minutes. I played twice so far and we've come sort of close to winning which of course gives you an incentive to try again and there's all sorts of different ways to customize the game to make it easier or more difficult depending on how things go for you. Let me show you how this works. Here's the starting setup for Switch and Signal on the European side of the game board. Your goal is to move eight goods to each from Paris, Amsterdam, Berlin, and Nuremberg to Marseille before the deck of transportation cards runs out. You are going to use trains to pick up and deliver these goods with the trains entering the game and moving based on the transportation cards as well as the action cards that players will play from their hands. On a turn, you are going to reveal the top transportation card and carry it out. The game always begins with this blue card and the other transportation cards are randomized and two of them are removed from play so you don't know which cards are in play and what order they will come up in, but you do know you will start by entering one train of each color into play, which is good because otherwise you can't do much. To determine where a train starts, you roll the dice and place a train in that location. So black will start at five, brown will start at 10, and gray will start at nine. Okay. Once you do all that's listed on the transportation card, you now play any or all cards from your hand for your turn. And pl players can give advice to one another on what they want to do, but the active player in the end decides what they want to play. You can play nothing or all of your cards. There are three types of cards in the game. There are signal cards that move these green discs here. So for example, I might play this card in order to move this signal here so that the black train can travel along the path and enter Paris. If the black would move and have a red light in front of it, it must stop and cannot move further. So let's move this over here and then let's play a movement card and say we're going to move this black train so we roll the die. Each color of train has a different die. The black die moves, has numbers two to five on it. So it's the fastest one. The black train moves three spaces and stops here. I could play this other movement to continue it into Paris but let's look and see what other options we have. You have the gray one moving over here, but it can't enter Berlin because the signal is not there. I have no more signal cards, but you can play any two cards as a joker. So I could play two, move this over here, and ensure that the gray train could get into Berlin, but the gray die has movements only from one to three with three ones on it. So it's not likely that the gray train could even get into Berlin if I wanted it to. The brown one though, it can move through this signal here. Let's try this. We'll move brown. Brown has numbers from one to four. We get four, one, two, three, four. Now it cannot enter Berlin because the signal's behind it. Let's play these two as a joker. And now we have opened up Berlin so that the brown train can go in there. That's the end of my turn. I can play any, again, any or none of my cards. I can stop when I wish. At the end of my turn, I draw five cards from the deck and add them to my hand with a maximum hand size of 10. That was a fairly straightforward first turn, so let's move along and see what else might happen as you continue play. The next player begins their turn by revealing the top transportation card. The game lasts 17 turns total because you have the starting card and then 16 random cards. In this case, you are going to enter a train into play and it will be the color of your choice. 
There are only three trains of each color. You will choose a color before you know what city that train is going into. And you will choose based on what's available to you because you can't choose a color if they're all on the board and where you think you might wanna go. But initially you have no idea. You don't know how things are set up. You're just beginning to play and playing at random somewhat. So let's start with black and it's going into seven up here. Hmm, seven's got this route that it will follow in order to get into Amsterdam. Okay, now we're going to move all of the gray trains. So it's got the orders one and two. There's only one gray train on the board. If there were multiple ones, you would say, let's move this one first. You roll the gray die, we get a two. And now we move all the brown trains. And again, there's only one. Moves one space and it enters Berlin. And now the active player will take their turn. And they have one signal and four movement cards. So if I want to adjust any switches, I have to spend any two cards as a joker. We've got the gray train here. Let's use this to move a signal. We can move this one here. We keep this one here. There's no particular reason, but you must have at least one signal on a city. So you can't make a city completely impossible to get into, uh, but sometimes they're not very useful. Hmm, where are we gonna go? Sure, we'll do this for now. And then you discard any card, any one card, and you are going to load a train. But now this train cannot leave except out of the signals, which will take it back to a starting city, and that's bad. So just in case there's brown movement on the next card, let's spend two of these to move this signal over here. So now this train can exit. I have a, only one card left in my hand. I could get this train into Paris because whatever I roll, the train will go into Paris. However, if I haven't loaded the train with a good and black comes up for something that has to move, it would then have to move here without being loaded with a good and it'd start back towards the starting city, which is bad. So let me leave black here. Brown set and ready to go. Gray is, gray is ready to enter the city. So I'm just gonna end my turn with this one card in hand and draw five new cards. Done. One thing we didn't realize during our first playing of Switch and Signal was how much each turn is related to the turns that follow and how you are not necessarily trying to maximize what you can do in a turn. Pretty much we would play all the cards in our hand, however we could in order to do more stuff. But the problem was we weren't setting ourselves up for the turns to come. What could happen next? Because bad things happen if trains have to move and they are not ready to move or they move in the wrong direction. Let's go one more turn. In this two player game, this player is now going to start their next turn, revealing here they're going to have a train enter play of the color of their choice. Let's have brown for variety. Brown enters at two. Oh, it's a long haul from two. And you have a problem in that if brown moves up here, it's going to hit this switch. So you need to change this at some point before brown moves too far. If you change this one, Brown would just move to Marseille and exit the board and go back to the depot and be out of play. That is not necessarily a bad thing because again, if you can't place a train on the board, then uh, you lose time and time is bad. You are now going to choose a color of train and move all trains of that color. And you will then choose a separate color and move all trains of that color. So let's choose black because we're set up here. Black's going to move into Paris. Black is going to move two spaces on around this track here. It'd be good if we could move these switches and then train. Black would have a slightly shorter path to Amsterdam, but we don't have the cards for it and we're saving only one space. So let's not worry about it too much. Instead, we should worry about rolling the die on the board because it's very easy to hit these discs and these goods cubes and these trains and move them out of Orion, out of their proper spaces. If a cat jumped on this board, for example, our game would be done. Everything would just be wrecked. So keep that in mind when you were playing, please. Next, we choose a different color. We've already moved black, can't move that. Brown is set up here. Brown set up here. And we have two brown. Let's move brown. We'll start with this one, just I should have chosen beforehand. 
And as you see, I just hit this here. One, two, three. Oh, one, two. And then it can't go because there's no signal. For each movement that you cannot make, you must lose a time marker from the board here. You start with seven time markers. If you run out of all the time markers, then you take one of the top transportation cards and you just remove it from play without looking at it. You don't know what you lost, but you lost one of your turns. So you do not want to lose time. Perhaps I shouldn't have chosen Brown. Bad choice, Eric but it was 50-50 as to whether the train would move past this signal or not. Let's move this brown. We get three, one, two, three. And now we're stuck here. Next player takes their turn. Looking ahead to see what's possible. Well, let's play this to move here. Let's play a signal to have this ready. Let's say discard this to load black now this train well let's just discard these two to switch this over here so now black will be ready to exit paris this gray can still enter berlin this brown oh see i messed these up over here let's pretend it was like this brown can go here which would be bad assuming it was like this i can consult the rules setup because i haven't changed that yet yeah okay it was like this Brown's okay, black, black, everything's good. I have no cards in the hand, draw five and continue. As you can already see, switch and signal is a little delicate in that you can accidentally hit things and it's hard to remember where things were in the game. Ideally, this board would be double thickness with cutouts for where all the switch and signals could go so that you could not lose that information, but that would be a far more expensive game in order to do that double layer board. So just be careful when you are playing the game in order not to let bad things happen. We'll run through one more turn just to give more examples of what can go wrong. For the next player's turn, reveal the top card and now we have only movement. No trains are entering play. You're just going to choose which train is going to move and move it the proper number of spaces and then you begin your turn. So you're looking ahead to where things can go. Black is going to go along here and we need to move this in order to enter Marseille, but we also have this signal here, but you're looking ahead, one, two, three, four, five, six. How long, how many turns approximately will it take for this train to get here? How quickly do I need to act in order to do something? This train is about to hit this switch, and then, uh, where is it going? Where is this going? What is the plan for this train? I don't have one, and maybe it would have been better to just go off the board of Marseille instead of having this train taking up time and moving around here. I gotta worry about where it's going. It doesn't even have a path really to get anywhere. But this player goes, maybe they're going to take this switch here. It'll go along here. But then we have to adjust this, we have to adjust this. Maybe you get to Nuremberg? Sure. At some point, this train still isn't here. This one isn't here. I don't have to do anything. I can just sit on all my cards other than playing that one in order to assure, ensure that, oh, no, no. Brown has that path. We'll move this one over here for this path. Don't have to worry about that signal yet. We can just be done. Be done with my turn, draw five cards, and then jump on to the next turn. We're going to enter something new, okay? Say we enter black, once again. Enter six up here, where there's a problem in that it cannot enter. Again, each movement that doesn't take place, you have to lose a time marker. Even worse, even worse, what can happen is you have to enter a train where a train is already there. So if, for example, this train had not moved and I had rolled a seven and this train would have to enter the board, instead the train doesn't enter the board and I lose two time tokens. So it's kind of a double whammy. You were losing the clock, which will lead to you losing cards, but also I don't even put a train on the board, which means I lose movement possibilities. Alternatively, that also means that it's more challenging because you've got more stuff on the board to manage. So now I'm going to move trains of a color of my choice. I probably don't want to pick black because I'm definitely going to lose time because there's only one two on the die. So if I roll three, four, or five, which is gonna happen five, six at the time, I'm going to lose one or more time markers. So maybe I wanna roll brown because I've set that up for success. 
even though I really want black to move here and I want black to move here. Yes, here, but brown, sure. So brown moves one. Brown, one, two, three, four. And now we continue. So you have these difficulties of trying to manage everything at the same time in order to set things up. As you can see, this gray has, we've done nothing with this gray. Gray is a real trouble spot in that it takes a long time to do anything and go anywhere and you don't particularly want it to move if you can move other things instead. So I'm looking at my hand here for what I'm going to do. Well, I definitely want to switch this and switch this. And now I can get brown over here to Nuremberg, assuming I get a signal here. So let me do this. And this one's set up, and this one's set up, and this is set up, I need a signal here. This one's still sitting, but I don't even want it to run anyway because right now the signal is here. Actually, back up and reverse this. Let me not do this yet. And instead, play this for black movement. Yes. Two. Oh, let's pretend I rolled a four just to show how ideally my smart plan was to one, two, three, four right through here and then switch the tracks and now brown would be set up to go in. But instead, it moved only two, and now I'm stuck. Either black's going to move next turn, or brown's going to move and have trouble here. I don't know what's gonna happen. I could just end my turn and say, well, or I can use these two to move black as a joker, but that's super not helpful. Let's just say the next player goes. and gray moves. It gets into Berlin and now we carry on from here based on this massive stack of cards because this player did not do much on their turn. The trouble spots in the game that you're going to look out for, again, each movement you cannot make, you lose a time marker, that's bad. If you can't enter a train into a city, you lose two time markers, that's bad. If a train would go back to a starting city, you lose two time markers. And that can happen often if you mismanage the signals in a city. If you entered Paris here and then black had to move before you adjust the signal, black's just coming right out of Paris and going back to Calais and too bad for you. You just lost the use of that train. You also have trouble where sometimes you will have a head-on collision. If for some reason you move the switches like this, these trains would now be headed at one another. Don't do that. But if that happens, then whatever train is moving, well, you're going to lose time based on it not being able to move, and then that train returns to the depot. If it had a good in it, you now lose that good. So that's how the game flows. Ideally, you don't lose too much time because each time you do, that's another turn, complete turn, gone from the game. There's an overview of Switch and Signal, which I played twice so far in a review copy from Cosmos, once with two players, once with three. And in both of our games, we had seven of eight goods in Marseille at the end of the game. So it seems like we were very close to winning, except we were not actually close at all, at least in the first game, because our final good was in Berlin, farthest city from Marseille. We had no train close by. It would have taken at least three more complete turns in order to get a train in Berlin load it and get it out to Marseille. We just had no chance of that happening. And that was kind of the case in the second game as well, where we were better, but not great. And part of it is learning not to make terrible decisions that lead to bad consequences down the road. In the first game, we had two trains collide head on, which means we lost a train along with time. We had a train return to the starting city because we had not moved the signal. So again, lost a train, lost time. We had a train go into a city where there was already a train, lost train, lost time. Just throwing stuff away left and right. You were trying to set yourself up for good things down the road, and a lot of that is figuring out, well, what's the best thing to do now, and what do you leave up to chance, or the possibility of chance in the future? So a lot of it is making decisions on things to do, so that hopefully, whatever the transportation card is, things will just flow in your favor. You don't know what's coming, 
but you want it to happen. And it's weird. I think of this game a little bit like parenting in that you, of course, take certain actions that you hope your child will reflect and carry on later and they'll make smart decisions and good things will happen. Maybe you are not fully in control of what's going to happen. So you set things up as well as you can and then respond. The transportation card comes up. Sometimes, you know, certain trains move, a train gets added to the board. Okay, well now we gotta adjust things again. We gotta make other plans for how things are going to happen. And then hopefully things move all down the board. You often have choices of which color trains to move on the transportation cards and they all move. So of course you want to concentrate and get lots of a color on the board, but then you have to be set up in order to optimize that color in order to get the maximum advantage from it. Although sometimes that's a bad thing, but generally get those trains on the board and keep them moving, get them down to Marseille and they return to the depot and then you can use them again rather than just having them stuck somewhere. Or you have to manage it. You can try to ignore a train, but often that will just lead a train getting into running into a switch. And then you just lose a lot of time repeatedly if you don't set something up for that train to move. So there's a lot of adjustments to make a lot of things in this very straightforward game to keep an eye on and try to juggle and have everything going at once. I didn't talk about special characters on the board. Let me address those for a moment. In the upper corner of the board, you have three special characters that you can use once each over the course of the game in order to take an action that will benefit you. For example, when I rolled a two on the black die here and this train did not move, I could have chosen to use this character, which lets you re-roll the result of one die. Roll again, three. I would have moved the train back here. I would have marked this character to show I've used him once, I can't use him again. The other two characters on the board, well, this one allows you to pass through a city instead of stopping in it, because normally you must stop in a city, whether you wanna get a good there or not, but if you have the signal set up appropriately, for example, if I have this here in Nuremberg, and, uh, well, I have a gray train, so that's not a great example, but if I had a black train, that was loaded up and I roll something high, then I can continue just pass through Nuremberg instead of stopping there, continue on my way in order to not waste time. With this guy, you get to choose all the trains of a color on the transportation card and just ignore them. So if you turn over a card where I move brown and gray and brown would be bad for whatever reasons, I'm heading off the board, head on collisions. This sort of example right here is definitely a cluster that you do not want. You could just say, well, we're going to skip all the brown movements, but I can't move this brown and skip that brown. I just have to say no brown movement at all. I would say that we did not use the special characters well in our game. And of course, it's going to be difficult to know when to use them anyway, because you don't necessarily know what a critical choice is at a particular moment, because you have those three special actions you can use only once each, and then they're gone. And so is this really the moment that I need to reroll a die? How critical is it? that I get that train through that switch and then change it so the brown can go next. How much is that going to gum things up down the line versus possibly saving that for later when I really, really need it? I don't know. It's a very simple decision, but it weighs on you and it's sort of hanging over you all the time when we're gonna do this at the right moment. It's a nice little gamey thing to have that choice in your head confronting you. Because otherwise the system is very simple the way it's set up and just everything flows. I have not yet tried the North American side of the board. Let me give you a little taste of that. Gameplay is identical on the North American side of Switch and Signal, but things are a bit different because while you have the goods in the center of North America as in Europe, you are delivering one good of each color to New York and San Francisco. Yes, you are now having to manage trains going in opposite directions. You can't just set up a path to Marseille and sort of funnel everything down that same path as we were trying to do on the European side of the board. No, you have trains going in opposite directions and you're gonna to have to manage them because of course things in Chicago have to go to San Francisco and Denver goes to New York. So you have increased possibilities for bad things happening. I have not experienced this yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Additional changes, you have the city locations scattered around the board. So six, seven, and eight, the numbers that are more likely to come up on the die are somewhat far away from everything happening. So you have more of a challenge in order to get the trains out there and make things happen. 
you have different special actions on the board. Uh, with this guy, you can look at the transportation card that you would draw and decide, nope, I'm gonna put it on the bottom of the deck and draw something else instead, and then his power is gone. With this person, you can move or not move one particular train that you would normally have to move, and that's it. So you still move everything of a color except for one particular train, use that. With this one here, you can, instead of randomly having a train start in a city, you can have it start in a city, well, not at random, but based on the city tiles here. You have the numbers from two to 12, and so you have equal odds of a number coming up instead of more likely getting a result six, seven, eight, and starting on this side of the board. And these city tiles give you another way to play. So if you don't like the randomness of the dice and the possibility that on your starting transportation card, when you're putting trains out, I roll six each time, which means I would only end up with a black train in six and I would lose four time. Well, that's not a fun way to start the game. Instead, you turn these city cards face down, these city tiles, and okay, starting black goes here in five, and brown goes in three, and gray goes in 11, and now I'm going to shuffle them all up. And anytime we get trains entering the board, we're going to turn one up, put out that, you know, choose the color first, put this here, set this aside, and now we're gonna pick from the rest of them. So you know that you are not getting an eight and you will not have to worry about moving this train too quickly and possibly losing time on the way. You have even the odds of each number coming up you can make assessments if you had a certain number of things come up right now. Well, you know what's not coming and you can plan for it and try to have the switches set up in order to optimize what's going to happen. That is one of the variants that you can use and it doesn't necessarily seem to make it easier or harder. It's just a different way of adjusting things, of figuring out what's going to happen when. There are other ways that you can customize the board to make it easier or harder. You can use an extra signal and have that on the board. So now you have more ways to make connections and follow through on the paths. We had a lot of juggling as is designed in which you would have to enter a city and then take a turn to move the signal over and then exit out of that city. Well, if you have one more signal, that's just that little bit of ease to make that happen. You can also adjust by having uh, one or two of the transportation cards in the deck instead of being removed. That would add additional turns to play and give you more time to play. Alternatively, if you're really awesome, just remove three cards to start with instead. On top of that, you have extra goods cubes. You could start with three goods cubes in each city, and now you have to deliver 10. Specifically, two of each color and any two extra. Your choice you decide what you wanna do. You can start with, well, instead of seven time markers, start with eight or even up to 10 if you're really not great or you just wanna give yourselves an easier time of it. You have more time on the boards. So of course, with 10 tokens, you're going to lose fewer cards based on the number of mistakes that you make. By the way, if you have only one token left and you would lose, let's say three time because brown has to move and brown cannot move well you lose one lose a card put them all back and then lose two more and continue from that point so you can adjust the time markers you can adjust the number of goods cubes you can adjust the signals you can adjust the transportation cards in order to change the difficulty level of the game itself that's all that i have to say about switch and signal right now which might seem like a lot given that i've played only twice so far not even on both sides of the game board or with the city tile variant or adjusting any of the difficulties but this game has been in my head a lot since i played it or my head has been in this game or on its tracks in the back of a train being hauled around the city been thinking about it a lot since I played just because it's a fantastic game experience. My wife participated in one of the games. She's not a big game player, but she likes cooperative games, so she joined this and had a great time. And this cooperative game doesn't have any elements that necessarily require you to have multiple players. You could just do this all on your own with one hand of cards or multiple hands of cards because there's only three card types. 
you don't have that much variety in terms of the type of cards you have, but it's not about the special powers or the variance of card abilities. It's more about the togetherness of playing, which is exemplified again by the subtitle of the box. Reach your goal together. Get around the table with other people, play games, have a good time, pass around suggestions to one another, celebrate when things go well for you, and lament that eh, we didn't quite reach the goal, but maybe next time we'll do that together.